Hi everyone, Ryan Ratliff here, fly tying manager and guide at Mad River Outfitters. Today we're going to do a fly tying tutorial. This fly is going to be, uh, it's got a couple names, but most recently I've been referring to it as the sunken fox. It could be the drowned fox, depends on when I've talked to you about it. But I've been tying this fly for roughly probably about five or six years. I started out as a low water steelhead swinging fly. Uh, I try to prefer, I prefer to swing. Um, for steelhead. It started with for steelhead but it's been a great trout pattern so this is for those guys who like to do the the trout spay stuff those light three four five weights for uh, with the scandy heads this is a great fly it has a little bit of weight to it so it can be used on a floating head or you can actually use a light a sink tip, a versa leader, a sonar leader, a poly, whatever you want to call it one of those types of sinking uh, sinking tips off of your Scandi. Great, great fly um, and very versatile. I've even caught quite a few uh, smallmouth on this also. So let's go ahead and get started with it. I'm going to go ahead and put in the jaw and the transformer vise here. The hook that we're going to use, it's, gonna, it's kind of a traditional hook. It's a salmon iron. I know they're not very popular these days uh, for some of the modern uh, materials, but this one has enough length has the nice upturn eye and enough weight to help get it down. So this is the Tiemco 79.99 in a size 8. All right, we're going to drop this in the vise here. All right, so this fly, it, it takes a couple, it's striping wire, so it takes a couple different types of wire. This is going to be the large size. You can go a large and a medium, just kind of depends on what you want, but I'm doing two different colors, color options. I've tied them in everything from red and black to silver and gold, uh, lots of different things. Silver and blue, that steelhead blue ultra wire is a great option too, but this is a little bit of a creek shiner color. Uh, this olive and or the green and the silver so get my thread out here I'm using uh, right now I'm using GSP this is GSP 100 and it's pretty crazy for a trout fly to be using GSP 100 but I need to lock this this uh, ultra wire down so it doesn't shift when I wrap these wires up and so this is a flat very strong thread that I can lock this in and make it so the wire will, uh, it doesn't shift. And I'll show you what happens. This is one of the main issues that most people have when they're starting this up. So let's go ahead and th put the thread on the hook. I'm gonna start up at the eye and we're just gonna work our way down. Where that wire loops back at the head, you just gotta watch out. You don't hit that with your thread. That will mess up your thread. Again, I'm using GSP, so I'm gonna use a little bit more aggressive scissor. I'm not gonna use my fine tip trout scissor. All right, I'm going to cover the hook shank here, untwist that GSP so it's nice and flat. I'm going to get some wire out. Keep this wire in the keeper here for right now. Just a couple twists of it. Now when I'm in production mode, I'm tying a bunch of these, I will leave this wire on the spool uh, so I just don't have to have a step of cutting pieces of wire. So it, just kind of a preference. When you're first starting out, you might want to actually cut the wire off. Just give yourself a good uh, six or eight inches just so you have enough to hold on to. But I'm going to try to leave it on the spool here for you so you can see how we do this. I'm going to make both of the ends butt up nice and even. I'm going to bring them up to where the loop back is for the eye on this salmon iron. So kind of turn it here so you can kind of see a little bit better. I'm going to wrap it like that. Just tie it down. I want it to be on the side of the hook right now. Doing striping wraps going up. Kind of stripe like a candy cane because when I come back I'm going to cross those and this is going to make a, a light, a really tight locking weave. Again, I'm on the side of the hook, 
and the reasoning, I'm going to go up and back, then up to the eye. Okay, so I'm going to bring my thread up here. I'm going to put a little half hitch in there just to lock it in. Put it over top of the bobbin cradle. And make sure these wires are nice and side by side, not twisted. I'm going to hold it nice and tight. And then I'm going to twist. Start rotating the vise around. You can do this by hand if you needed to. I like to get about three rotations and then check and make sure everything's okay. Go is to hold this really tight right there. Really tight. Side by side wraps. Going up this body. Attenuate this up until I get to where that looped over. So the, the eye looped back over. I'm going to stop right there. Hold this straight up. Grab my thread. I'm going to come over it twice here. Loosen up my thread. So it should stay there. Give it a I got the GSP, so I can pull pretty tight. Give it a nice tug, wrap, all good. And then do the helicopter. Pop the wire off. All right. So that's all done. Now that, sh that wire there that popped off is a little bit sharp, so I'm just going to take my thumbnail, push that around, smooth it out, then I'm going to overwrap over top of that nice and light. Then once I get it, it covered over. I'm just going to give pretty tight wraps across that. That's my body. Two-tone striping going up. Nice and easy, but heavy. It's going to help it sink. All right, so at this point, I'm going to grab a little bit of dubbing, and I like to use this ice dub, or if you still have some of the pseudo seal around, you can use some of that. This ice dub works out really well. Just going to dub this in. A little bit thick there. Going to make it a little bit smaller noodle. The dubbing, slide that up. Just making a dubbing ball right here. So I'm going to come back over top the wire a little bit, make a dubbing ball. Pull it back, a couple wraps in front. We're all set there. All right, so that dubbing ball is going to help as a prop. Um, this Foxy brush is excellent stuff. It does a really good job as a prop. Uh, there's a lots of different things that you can use to prop up your wing. But this is the quickest. We've done all kinds of different things. Um, I've messed with the body tubing, the eighth inch body tubing. I've done that too, but this is pretty, pretty consistent what I like to use here because it's nice and quick. All right, so there's that wire in the middle of this brush. So a bunch of fibers, they put in a loop, uh, a stainless loop, and then they spin it. You can make these yourself, uh, but these are nice and conveniently done for you, and they're excellent. So these are by EP. So I'm going to cut this little piece off here, and I'm going to use a junk pair of scissors to do that. I don't want to mar up any of my good scissors, so I'm just going to cut that little piece, extra piece, and I'm going to tie this in. Alright, so now I'm just going to do about two or three wraps of this and it is flat and I'm going to fold it back on itself when I wrap it and be real, make, uh, be real careful to make sure that I'm not trapping any of it down. So just going to pull this back like this, just wrap this around <clears throat> right in front of that dubbing ball. Pull on it nice and tight, cinch it up, over wrap it, one wrap to hold it, come in, pull on that, get your junk scissors out. Now, just like with the wire, there's a little piece of sharp uh, stainless there. So I'm going to push my thumb over like that. I'm going to fold everything back, give it two loose wraps right over that end. Then once I get it covered, then I'm going to give it some pressure and pull down. A couple fibers here trapped. Pop those off. All right. 
again, this GSP is kind of overkill for this, but it's it's allowing me, it gives a flat profile and allows me to go over top of that, those pieces of sharp metal, real delicate so it doesn't cut my, my thread. You can use UTC 140, but I like to do this. I like to use that gel sponge just because it's quicker. So I'm gonna pull out some of this Pro Sport Fisher, Pro Tube, Mardic Marble Fox here. It's got good under fur, so I like to have a good under fur and it's got uh, it's not too horribly long in the guard hair so it's just a little bit longer than the under fur this is going to be real sparse this is just a real light sparse wing here grab roughly I don't know, about half the width of a pencil there cut it right off at the hide you always cut this stuff right at the hide so you have the full length on the next batch all right so the guard hair is really long or is longer than the fly, so I don't want to have just guard hair. And I want a good mix of guard hair and under fur. So I'm going to hold the under fur, grab the guard hair, pull this out, and stack it down. Got the one side, I'm going to do the other side here. Stack it down, flipping it over like that. Let's size it up. So nothing too crazy in there, but about that length there so roughly about like that I'm gonna put this in a, actually in a dubbing loop so if you haven't ever used a dubbing loop we're gonna work on that today trim this off here that's right where I want it there a little bit of fuzzy stuff put it through my comb okay so dubbing loop let me move this out of the way so you can see what's going on I have my thread here. Everything is uh, locked in tight. Everything's good. I'm going to make a loop. Bringing my thread back up. Then I'm going to wrap around here twice. Then two more wraps over top of the hook shank. Okay. At this point, I need to hold this down. So there's lots of different types of tools that you can use to do this. Um, there are lots of manufacturers that, that have different types of dubbing tools. Here is a dubbing spinner with ball bearings in it. Um, there's lots of different types that you have. Some of your kits you might have uh, like a shepherd's hook it looks just like that. Let me go ahead and uh, go ahead and use the ball bearing one because I can get a little bit tighter. Just going to hold this down here. This thread I'm going to put a little half hitch in just so it doesn't come undone. I'm going to put it in the, in the bobbin cradle. Alright so my loop that I made here I'm going to take, and you could put wax in here if you wanted to, if you're having trouble getting it positioned. Uh, the GSP is really slick, so sometimes you might want to put some wax if you're having trouble. But basically, I'm just going to hold just the end of this, and then I'm going to spread this out. Okay, Get it about right there, and I'm going to hold the whole thing and slide it up till it's in the right spot. Then I'm going to hold this towards me. I'm going to spin it to get some twists in it. Gently loosen that out and spread it out so it'll catch up with the spin there. I'm going to do that a couple times. This just gives me more control. I can control it. Once I get to where I think everything's good, it's not too, not too trapped inside there, then I can spin it a couple more times. So I'm going to take my bodkin. I'm going to pick out some of this here. You can also grab your under fur comb or your, your little comb that you have there and just kind of pick it out to lots of different options to do this. All I'm doing here is just making sure anything that would have twisted around the, the thread is, is all out. So a little bit, you can tell because it's a little bit sparse in some, such, some areas and that's because it's wrapped around itself. All right. Then I'm going to take it and I'm going to try to fold it over on itself here. Alright, there's a little gap right there. I'm just going to wrap that on the hook. Alright, so now my dubbing loop and the fox that's in the dubbing loop is right up against that foxy brush. I'm just going to go nice and slow. That's one wrap. I'm going to pull this back. Give another wrap, 
pull this back. One more wrap, pull that back, and this will be the last little bit here. Right down to the end. So now, at this point, I am pretty close to the eye of the hook, right where I want to be. I am going to, I'm holding on to that, that dubbing, all that Arctic Fox in that dubbing loop. I'm going to give two loose wraps right behind the hook eye. Let the bobbin tension just hold that down. Pull on the thread. Give two more. All right. So now I'm going to pull all this back couple of locking wraps right in front, good tension, I'm going to trim off. This is the rest of my dubbing loop that's sitting right there. Push it right into there and that pops right off. All right. All right, so at this point, you see it's just a little, little bit, once this gets wet, you're just going to see a little bit of a white uh, kind of a, a form around that foxy brush and then there's a little bit in the core a little bit of sparkle in there so just a small little streamer it would fish just fine like this but I like to add one more little thing contrasting contrasting piece right at the head and this is the Cockdelion hen very inexpensive uh, but very useful feather and of course this is by Whiting Farms uh, no no better uh, supplier of hackle out there. And I'm going to pick a feather from roughly from the middle. Pull that off right at the stem. All right, so this is this color here is actually chartreuse over a natural. It's not like a bleached and then dyed chartreuse. So it, it's going to have that darker look to it. It's not going to be a bright chartreuse. It's going to be a little more of a of an olive. I don't need this fuzz down here, so I'm going to peel all this off. I'm going to hold it by the tip pull down towards the base of the stem. Get all that off of there. Then I'm going to grab it right at the tip, pull down. My son always says this looks like the Christmas tree, make it look like a Christmas tree. So I'm only going to have one side on there. Again, I'm going to tie in by that upside down triangle. Two fairly loose wraps, fold everything back under tension. Then I'm just going to wrap this around here, around the front, just to give it a couple wraps. All right, now I'm down to the stem, reach underneath. Try not to trap any of those material, those fibers down. Reach underneath, go over the stem once, hold tension here so it doesn't come undone. Pull everything back. Two, three wraps there and that's, that's done with that. Pull up on the stem, the same push cut. Not going to come in and chop it, I'm just going to make a V with my scissors. Whip finish. Pull it back just a little bit, come in with that push cut, cut my thread, pull out the UV, loom thin, I'll hold all this material back. I'm just putting a little bit just on the thread wraps and just on the edge of the material. And that's going to actually strengthen that feather, strengthen. Uh, give it more durability to that face of the Arctic Fox. Loon Infinity Light. All right, and there you go. There you have it. Just a little sparse, little um, clear water and also a trout, small little trout spay. Sunken fox, drowned fox, whatever you want to call it, but great little fly. 
gets the job done very effective and fun to fish. All right, thanks for joining us today for this fly tying tutorial. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and uh, we'll see you next time.